Welcome back. You've made it to day three of the Art and Science of Drawing. I really want to congratulate you on your persistence with this program. I know drawing requires a lot of practice, and every day we're going to build on the previous skills. Before we get into any instruction today, I really want to communicate once again the importance of practice. If you're just watching the videos, then you're really not going to get the full experience of this. Remember, drawing is a skill, and it's a skill that has to be developed through a lot of practice. So please, I really want to encourage you to do the exercises. In the first session, we talked about the importance of starting off drawings very lightly because we know we're not going to get it right the first time and we know we're going to want a drawing that we can adjust along the way. The second day, we talked about this idea that what artists do is they translate form into recognizable and drawable shapes. And that's the way we can deal with any sort of complex form. Remember, any form, no matter how complex, distills down into just a few basic shapes. And by understanding how to draw these shapes, we can draw anything we want to. Today, we're going to expand on that idea. And specifically, we're going to focus on shapes made using straight lines. If we simplify it all the way down, there are only two kinds of lines we can make. Lines will either be straight or they will be curved. Now, in the previous session, we introduced curved lines through circles and ovals, and we'll learn more about curved lines in the next session, but today we're going to focus on straight lines and the shapes that they make. The first thing you're going to learn is how to draw a straight line. Now, drawing a straight line has a lot in common with drawing circles and ovals in the sense that speed is really important. Once again, you're going to see me moving my pencil back and forth very quickly, and that is because we have to get a critical momentum up for the lines to work out. I also want to communicate the idea that the straight lines you make don't have to be perfect. Once again, we have tools to help us make perfectly straight lines. If you ever need a perfectly straight line, you can get a ruler. What we need to do is just learn how to draw lines that read as being straight without being perfect. And again, very few people can draw perfectly straight lines without a ruler, and it's not a very useful skill to have anyway. To start off, you're just going to see me practicing horizontal and vertical lines. Before we start drawing, let's take a look at this diagram. Right at the beginning, I'd like you to start thinking about every straight line as an angle, even horizontals and verticals. We'll expand on this idea further when we start to look at oblique angles, but for now I want you to think about a horizontal line as a zero degree angle and a vertical line as a 90 degree angle. Similarly to how we begin circle drawing, we're simply going to start off by pantomiming a horizontal line. Pay close attention to the speed in which I'm moving my hand. Moving your hand too slowly actually makes it more difficult to draw a straight line. The idea here, just like with circle drawing, is to get up a good amount of momentum. Notice you can tell where the line will be and approximately how straight it will be just by pantomiming it. When you're satisfied with the placement, length, and straightness of the line, don't stop moving your hand back and forth Simply tip the pencil down and go back and forth multiple times. You'll notice that my first couple of passes back and forth are lighter, and once I see that the line is doing what I want it to, I get progressively darker on the next passes. Go ahead and watch me demonstrate this a few more times. Just like with the circles, the goal isn't that every line is going to be perfect. You just want to start practicing drawing straight lines. It's very common for a natural arc to come out in some of these straight lines, but with practice, this can be minimized. Remember, the more you practice your straight lines, the better and straighter they will get. You'll make vertical lines with the same back and forth motion, except this time going up and down. Note that it does feel a little different in your arm. Again, the more different angles of lines you get used to making, the easier they become. Also, I want you to notice that I'm still using incredibly light lines as I'm drawing because drawing lightly is going to be critical when we actually start trying to draw objects. Drawing a decent horizontal line is an essential skill, especially for anyone interested in the landscape, where establishing a horizon line is going to be a common necessity. Using horizontals and verticals together in a drawing can add a strong sense of structure and stability. 
In this drawing by Daumier, the dynamic figures in the front are balanced by the strong use of horizontals and verticals in the background. It's important to note that Daumier's straight lines are not perfectly straight. They have a beautiful handmade quality to them that would be lost if he made these lines with the ruler. Drawing squares and rectangles is nothing more than putting horizontal and vertical lines together. A square, of course, is a four-sided shape whose sides are all of equal length. A rectangle is an elongated version of this four-sided shape. Every rectangle you're going to draw has a width-to-height relationship. For example, this rectangle is exactly twice as wide as it is high. This rectangle is exactly three times as wide as it is high. Of course, not all rectangles have such a straightforward width-to-height relationship. For example, this rectangle is about three and one-third times as wide as it is high. The other way you can think about the proportion of a rectangle is to evaluate the diagonal line from corner to corner. We'll learn more about how to evaluate angles and diagonals in a few minutes, but for now I just want you to keep this idea in mind as I demonstrate how to draw squares and rectangles. Each square and rectangle you draw is going to be made by drawing four individual straight lines, two horizontals and two verticals. You want to start off by thinking about where on the page you want your square or rectangle to go and how big you want it to be. I'll be starting off with the square. Once I've decided its size and placement, I'm going to begin by pantomiming the first line. It doesn't really matter which edge you choose to start with. Once you're satisfied with the line, just like we practiced, tip the pencil down and make your first attempt. While you're drawing the remaining three lines, don't worry about stopping the line right at the intersection at the corner. It's okay if the two lines overlap each other. Remember, these initial light shapes are just meant to serve as an underdrawing that you can darken up later on in the drawing process. Each side of your square should be the same length as all of the others. Rectangles are of course drawn the exact same way, except they'll be an elongated version of the shape. Remember, your lines and shapes don't need to be perfect. A closer inspection of this drawing reveals that even a master draftsman like Daumier is using a similar technique. You'll find horizontal lines standing in for a horizon in most landscape drawings and paintings. If horizontal and vertical lines provide structure and stability, then oblique angles provide excitement and dynamism. An oblique is any straight line that is slanted and neither horizontal nor vertical. We mentioned before that most people are good at recognizing true verticals and horizontals. Most people can also recognize a 45 degree angle. A 45 degree angle is what we get when we divide a right angle in half. If we divide a right angle into thirds, we get 30 and 60 degree angles. Although this is a little trickier to recognize, most people can be easily taught to do it. By adding the 45 degree angle back in, we can start to compare the differences between these three. Note that they're each 15 degrees apart. By adding in the 15 degree and 75 degree angles, we can complete our right angle in increments of 15 degrees. A skilled artist will be able to recognize even minor changes in angles. But at the beginning, it's just important that you start to familiarize yourself with some of the basic angles. In this drawing, we see a smattering of vertical lines providing some structure, but it gets all of its excitement and dynamism from the obliques. Once again, a closer inspection reveals beautiful hand-drawn lines that often overshoot their corners.
Triangles are three-sided shapes that contain oblique angles. Some triangles are symmetrical and often contain horizontal lines. Notice these triangles seem more structured and stable. Other triangles are made entirely of oblique angles. Notice these seem a little more chaotic and unbalanced. Oblique angles can also be used to make quadrilaterals that go far beyond right angles, squares, and rectangles. Quadrilaterals can add a lot of excitement and dynamism to a composition. They're also essential to recognize if you want to do any kind of perspective drawing. Remember, just like squares and rectangles, you can begin to evaluate their shapes not only by the angles of their edges, but by their diagonals from corner to corner as well. Ultimately, there are no limits to how many sides a shape can have. By combining numerous horizontal, vertical, and oblique angled lines, you can create incredibly dynamic shapes. Drawing lines at various angles is just like drawing horizontals and verticals. You want to begin simply by pantomiming. When you're satisfied with the direction, length, and placement of the line, Go ahead and tip the pencil down and go back and forth a few times, getting progressively darker. As you practice making lines going in different directions, I would recommend experimenting with different ways of holding your arm to find what is most comfortable for you. And again, just like when you draw rectangles and squares, it's okay to overshoot the corners. And another reminder that lines should stay light and do not have to be perfect. We're just trying to develop a comfort with these kinds of straight-edged shapes. For today's assignment, I'm going to provide you with a series of images that you're going to draw from. When you're instructed to do so, you're going to pause this video and draw directly from your screen. You'll be instructed to draw the contents of each image three times. Whenever you're done drawing the shapes or diagram provided on that image, Go ahead and hit play, and when you're instructed to do so, pause the video again and draw whatever shapes or diagram are on the next image. The learning outcomes are pretty simple. You want to get comfortable drawing straight lines at multiple different angles, and you want to get comfortable constructing straight edge shapes. Remember, this is still just practice, and we want to make sure we're still drawing lightly. For a bonus challenge today, I provided the multi-sided shape for you to draw from. Remember, the key to drawing a complex shape like that is to not only evaluate and measure the edges of the shape, but to also evaluate the diagonals from corner to corner and point to point. Well, have fun practicing today, and I will see you on day four. After pausing the video, draw each shape on the screen three times. Once you're done, hit play. After pausing the video, copy this diagram three times, then hit play. After pausing the video, draw each shape on the screen three times. Once you're done, hit play. After pausing again, draw each shape on the screen three times and hit play. After pausing again, draw each shape on the screen three times and hit play. If you want more practice, try copying this multi-sided complex shape. By now, you should be feeling more confident in your ability to draw straight lines and their shapes. I'll see you on day four.